months ago, the whole brokerage industry was being shaken up by Robin Hood's commission-free trading model. Privately held disruptor simply, well, it seemed totally ascendant. In the immortal words of Biggie Smalls, though, more money, more problems. As the pandemic spread all over the world, Robin Hood saw an unprecedented surge in trading volumes and time their systems couldn't handle it. They went down, stayed down during some of the most intense trading days of the first quarter. Uh, that's frustrating. But with sources saying Robinhood is raising new capital, an $8 billion valuation, what should we make of the company? Well, let's check in with Vlad Tanev. He's the co-founder and co-CEO of Robinhood. Get a better sense of the service issues, what caused them, the jaw-dropping trading volumes last quarter, and how well the company's doing. Mr. Tanev, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks for having me, Jim. It's a pleasure, as always. All right, so Vlad, I've known you for a while now, and I know that the people who love Robin Hood love it like people who love Tesla love Tesla. So I need to know, you had outages. There had to be some people who were frustrated. Has it led to a fall off in business, or is business strong? Yeah, like you mentioned, you know, we have, uh, like many businesses, faced our share of challenges with the uh, coronavirus pandemic. I think that we've sort of had a two-phased uh, impact. One is obviously with any business, we've had to deal with work from home. And, you know, for me personally, having two little kids running around, also the uh, historic market conditions that um, we haven't seen since the founding of Robinhood and really haven't seen uh, since 2000, 2008. So um, we had some service interruptions. We know customers uh, need Robinhood and love Robinhood and expect it to be up when they need it the most. And we've been investing a whole lot in not only mitigating the causes of the outages that we had about six weeks ago, but um, reliability and service quality has been and continues to be our number one priority as a business. And have the customers embraced that there are issues? Because it is a pretty one. COVID is pretty unbelievable. Uh, and accepted it and continued to trade? Or have people just said, you know what, I'm going to go elsewhere? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's a few things that have happened. Uh, number one, I, I think it's important to note and quite humbling that Robinhood has continued to have over 50% of the market share of new brokerage accounts. Okay. So what that means is out of all of the brokerage accounts that are being uh, opened industry-wide, Robinhood is getting uh, over half of them, including more than all of the incumbent legacy providers put together. Uh, we're also getting over half of mobile app downloads. So we're continuing to be uh, the go-to place for customers on mobile. And we've seen uh, record trading volumes and uh, record depositing activity into the platform um, in recent months as well. I know uh, because of uh, some issues involving what I mentioned my, about fundraising activity, which I know you can't talk about, you may not be able to address this, but we saw each other last at $10 million. Is there any way you can update that figure? Uh, unfortunately, I can't update that figure, but um, I can tell you that in March, you know, our volumes of daily trades have been up about 3x what we were seeing in Q4 of last year. Net deposits, so that's customers moving cash into the platform to buy, uh, to buy securities, have been up 17x, so almost 20x what we were seeing in Q4. And it's not just trading volumes, but uh, it's the buying activity that has been uh, quite fascinating and interesting. Customers are bringing in cash to buy and go long securities. So um, we've seen people buying uh, both companies that are particularly well poised to take advantage of the new environment. So lots of uh, interest in video conferencing, in uh, certain pharmaceuticals that are developing um, vaccines or, or treatments for, for COVID-19. And we've also seen a lot of interest in companies that uh, customers perhaps feel have been oversold into the pandemic with companies like American Airlines, Carnival Cruise uh, entering the top 10 of traded stocks on Robinhood. Well, that's incredible. So they are, this, I presume, again, these are younger generation investors who are looking to get into something that perhaps over a long term might end up being good in investments, which is kind of what, how the, you're supposed to invest. Exactly. You know, over half of our customers are first time investors and we take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, we know that um, it's an important milestone in every investor's life making that first investment. 
And a lot of people are thinking it's a good time to start. People that have maybe sat out 2018, 2019 because of all the concerns with the yield curve rever inverting, with maybe concerns that the market was at historic highs. Right. Uh, now the sentiment definitely seems to be shifting. Okay, so number one most bought stock is a company that shows that people have faith and are interested in defeating uh, COVID, and that's Innovio Pharma, which we've had on from Plymouth Meeting. So they're buying this dip, and now they're actually doing quite well if they bought it. Yes, uh, like I mentioned before, you know, there's been uh, Innovio, along with a few others, have entered the top 10, and uh, customers are excited and uh, sort of looking at a lot of these companies that they think could uh, perform very well in the new environment and uh, looking at them as buying opportunities. I think what's really exciting here is they, uh, I look at a stock like Disney and I try to tell people, okay, near term, not so good, long term, the best. That's again, is what people seem to be thinking who are customers at Robinhood. Absolutely. You know, Disney was in the top 10 of our most, uh, most held stocks even before COVID. Um, we've seen really rapid increases in the number of holders. And I think customers are optimistic about the long term. You know, they're seeing all the things that the company is doing with Disney Plus, and um, they think it's well positioned to take advantage of pretty much any market environment. Well, what do you think is happening here? You've got Elderly people or people in their 30s and 40s, they all want to go out. They don't want anything to do with it. At the same time, you have younger people embracing it, which is great for Robin Hood. Great, hopefully, for you to be able to do a, a big fundraise, frankly, because it seems like it's your time. Yeah, I mean, I, like I mentioned before, we're humbled by um, the amount of customers that are signing up and opening accounts on the platform. We take that responsibility very seriously. And the team has been uh, working really, really hard to not just get out new products and features like fractional shares, which right. uh, I announced on your platform a couple of months ago. Which they like, which, by right? The way, they like those. Yeah, they, it's, it's our uh, number one most requested feature. The wait list got up to well over 2 million. Incredible. I know it was about 250,000 when I, when I last came on your show. So we've been really excited to roll that out and to make uh, really large investments in service quality and reliability, like I mentioned earlier. Well, I'm so glad that I know that you wanted to address those. I know that personally you were probably horrified because you do everything you can for your customers from the day I met you. And it seems like that they are sticking with you. And then some, I want to thank you, Vlad Tenev, co-founder and co-CEO of Robinhood for coming on Mad Money. Great to see you, sir. Absolutely. Great to see you as well. See, the younger people get it. They're not afraid. It's just the elderly that are afraid. Come on, get with the program. Man, buddy's back into the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.